All right, I'm here with Siet. He's a major Airbnb operator in uh, America, one of the biggest one there. How, how many apartments do you have? So I have 300 units under management. Nice. Yeah. So you have 300 apartments in America. Where are they? Mostly in the Midwest. I'm in a few markets, but mostly my units are based out of Chicago. Okay. And are these all apartments that you're subleasing, like Airbnb arbitrage? Yes, I'm in the rental arbitrage space. I've been in the space for seven years now. Okay, that's crazy. So you started way before COVID. Yes, I started way before COVID. I actually started in 2017 is when I had my first short-term rental. It was uh, February of 2017. Yeah. Uh, a quick background about me is uh, I come from a finance background. Mm. I worked in corporate. Uh, but when I was in corporate, I always wanted something more. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to get out of the rat race. I listened to Bigger Pockets and a lot of, uh, a lot of rich dad, poor dad. And I was like, I need to do something different. Yeah. And that's when I bought my first multifamily property. I lived in one of the units. After the year was completed, I moved out of that unit and I put that unit onto Airbnb. And then the first month that I had it on Airbnb, um, I broke even on rent. And then, because it was February and it was like winter season and it was slow season. Um, but by the time spring break came along, which was like March, I ended up making two times rent. Mm -hmm. And by the summertime, I ended up making three times rent. And that's when like the light bulb went off. And I was like, yeah. I was like, wow, this is a crazy opportunity. Will this work in all my other units in my building? Yeah. So uh, at that time, the, the leases were coming up for renewal and uh, they wanted to leave. So I made those units into Airbnb. And then every unit that I put on during the summertime was making three times rent. Mm. So I was like, okay, this is it. I, yeah. I, I, I had a like 10, 15 year plan of, um, you know, uh, leaving my job and having financial freedom from real estate. But like, this is like three months in and I was like, all right, let's ready to go. I'm rock and roll. I'm yeah, going to quit man. my job. Similar story with me. I, I bought my first, uh, like I bought an apartment that was really good for Airbnb. Yeah. Put it on Airbnb. I made so much money. I was like, wow, why don't I just rent apartments from other people? And yeah. Put them on Airbnb. Right. So help me understand your background. Where did you start off from? How did you get into this game? Yeah. So I was an insurance broker for three years. Okay. I was buying apartments and like the third apartment I bought was ideal for Airbnb. Put it on Airbnb, made a bunch of money. And that's when I realized like, okay, I got to go on into this. Right. So I just started renting apartments from other people, putting it on Airbnb, got, uh, got to know some good people that own a lot of apartments scaled it up to like 25 apartments in in iceland oh nice then i moved here and now i'm at eight apartments here and trying to grow that to 100 over the next year so do you still have your units in iceland or or are you stopping business in yeah iceland? it's still going in iceland okay very nice yeah. so now you have uh so like 33 apartments under yeah. management yeah that's so, right so you'll get there as you're scaling up fast too you how yeah, long ago did you start uh, so I started my first apartment in 2021. So 2021. Uh, my journey has been a little shorter than yours. Yeah. So tell me why Dubai? Why did you come to Dubai um, and out of all markets? Why didn't you grow your business in Iceland? Yeah, so Iceland's not very scalable. It's a very small market. You have to wait very long to get the apartments that make sense. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to go somewhere bigger and I wanted to go somewhere where everybody speaks English. Right. Because I want to be fluent. I want to be in, in, like, in the culture. And it was either America or Dubai. Dubai made more sense because it was easier to get a visa, easier to get everything. So that's why I ended up here. Nice. When did you come here? How long ago? I came 1st of July. 1st of July. So I've been here like six months. Just yeah, about. so now we're in December, right? So mm -hmm. just six months. And you were able to acquire eight units that quickly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So talk to me. How did you do that? How did you get uh, your first unit here? What was the process? Yeah, so first you just got to create a license, get all the permits and everything. And then yeah. the, my first two units were just two apartments in downtown Dubai. Got them up, got two more. I was at four, then I hired my first employee. And oh, nice. once I have my employee, it's so much easier to scale. And now we're scaling fast nice. and I'm getting investors involved. So I'm going to be able to get to a hundred here in Dubai, hopefully within a year. Very nice. So it's growing Congratulations fast. to you. That's Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. But why are you in Dubai? Yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, for one, I never been here in Dubai and yeah. I wanted to visit here, but uh, I wanted to make this purposeful. So when I came here, I'm like, okay, let me meet with other Airbnb operators. That's not my initial goal to start business over here. 
but what if I fall in love? You know, what if I like uh, the area? What if I could see myself coming here, bringing my family here, you know, a couple months out of the year? And I, if it'll give me some purpose to come here if I'm, you know, coming here for business, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want, if I do something here, if I fall in love, like I am falling in love now in Dubai, it's been awesome. I've only been here for 48 hours and I'm already liking it a lot. But if I do come here, I would want to have some Airbnbs, but not a scaled model. I'm doing good in my market in the Midwest, in Chicago, um, that I'm not looking to replicate that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But, you know, say 10 units, 15 units, yeah. and then Just um, dip, give me, into yeah, dip, dip into it. So it gives me a purpose to come down, enjoy Dubai, network, meet other people, because it looks like Dubai is a place that everyone wants to be. Yeah. yeah. Your apartments in Chicago, how much do you make per apartment on average per month? Yeah. On average, so there's huge seasonality in Chicago. So summertime is a busy season and the winter time is like slow season. So typically well, I'm averaging 1.9 times rent all year long. So my rents range from 1,500 to like 3,000, you know? So, uh, you know, typical on a monthly basis is like, three to four thousand dollars like a month revenue yeah, yeah revenue so profit is going to be about two thousand dollars a month so no i run a scale operation so i have a lot of operating expense in my business oh, so yeah. i have about 75 people helping me in my business wow. um to for managing 300 units when i say 75 there's 35 of them in in philippines and then there's the other oh, the main vir virtual, virtual assistants, assistants in Philippines. are in Philippines. Yeah. Um, so they're handling all my back end work, like my operations, my finance, my revenue management, and uh, like my onboarding and IT and my all my softwares. And then on site in my local market, I have my cleaners, runners, handymen, mm -hmm. and just like labor type workers, you know? Mm -hmm. So after all that, my margins have been fluctuating between like 15 to 20% um, mm -hmm. after my, uh, you know, my, my like my net income margin is 15 to 20 percent yeah but yeah you're still making a lot of money if uh yeah so to give you an understanding like um last year in 2022 i made 10.7 million dollars worth of revenue i had like 1.1 million dollars worth of profit mm. and then in 2023 i have 11.5 uh month to date up to december and then i'm going to end the year a little under 12 million and I'm also going to be around that $1.2 million worth of profit. Uh, profit. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. What are your goals? Are you, are you still expanding in Chicago or? Y yes and no. So, so I had initial goals to take this to 400 to 500 units, you know, uh, $20 million uh, of revenue a year. And I thought I was going to be able to hit that in 2023. But a lot of unforeseen things happened to me um, this last year. Uh, for one, I had pent up demand in 2022 that I did not see in 2023. And if, if anything, it was my demand was way less in 2023 than it was 2022. Um, I also had the worst winter I could ever imagine. I had the craziest losses that I ever, I ever took. So when I had a 1.1, 1.2 million dollars worth of net income in reserves last year, I had 1.5 million dollars worth of losses in the first five months out of, of the winter. You know, November, December, January, February, you know, 1.5. So I was negative $300,000, you know, during that time. And I started putting things on credit cards again, started delaying rents like five days because I have a grace period for five days. I took stuff off auto pay and finally uh, my summertime came back and my summertime this year is less than last year so it took a toll on me like my confidence like um, went away completely right and I was like what the hell's going on you know yeah. did, did I get myself in the wrong situation but fortunately um, it was lower but not as bad um, so but that kind of kept me at a standstill so I didn't add a bunch of units because I didn't want to exponentially lose more mm -hmm. if I kept on adding uh, but um, this winter is not as bad as the last winter. So mm -hmm. what it was is okay. there was like pent up demand in the summer and then there was like fatigue in the winter like yeah. this last year. But now all of a sudden it's more straight line this year. Yeah. So the summertime was not as good, um, but the winter time was way better, you know, mm -hmm. so it, it all ended up being okay. What are the regulations yeah. in Chicago? So regulations are really strict uh, and that's what I love because I love when other people can not easily join my market. Mm. So there's some criteria. If the building is four units or less, then you have to live in the building to do Airbnb. So that takes away a lot of the product um, anybody can have. So all single family houses? No can't single, go. yeah, you can't do yeah. it. Uh, you cannot do Airbnb in single family homes. And then um, you could only have 
25% of a building up to six units. So if you see one of these big skyscrapers right here, if it was in Chicago, you could only have six of those Dang. Airbnbs. So with that being said, a landlord that has a building like this or one of these buildings, they don't want six Airbnbs in their building. They have 100 tenants in there. The six Airbnbs are gonna affect the 100 tenants, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not worth it for them. So there's not a lot of Airbnbs in like the downtown skyscrapers, right? So then there's like a little niche product in between that I fall into and I was able to get those landlords to agree to have me have that product. So I love that, right? Mm -hmm. So I love that it's not easy for other people to join my market. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. What about your, you're, you're selling training courses. Uh, yeah. You're coaching people. How, how, how many people have you coached? Yeah. Okay, let's start with uh, what packages are you selling when you're coaching? Like, what does that look like? So I recently started my coaching initiative. Mm. I haven't got a paid client yet. Okay. I haven't offered a paid service yet. I see. Um, so right now I'm just developing my personal brand, doing podcasts, doing content, uh, trying to grow my social media following. Uh, but I have coached friends and families mm. to start this business. And a few of them have left their job so far. And a few of them have million dollar revenue businesses so far from what I brought to them. Mm. So there's going to be a point where I take my social media following and I'm going to monetize off that. And yeah. it could be coaching. It could be courses. It could be, uh, you know, raising capital. Um, it could be, you know, going into hotel management. I don't know yet. So for yeah. now, I'm just going to try to build my like personal brand. Yeah. For me, I'm, I'm doing a similar thing. I'm yeah. just focusing on growing my brand. I, right. I, I just, I'm scared of monetizing. I, I, I'm not sure if I want to sell courses or do training programs or anything like, like that. Yeah. I think I just want to like grow my brand, use it for getting investors, use it to be credible in the market. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just afraid of the course thing kind of thing. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. What, what are you afraid of? Cause maybe I have the same concerns. That's why I haven't yeah. pulled the trigger yet too. I think. Okay, there's two things. Yeah. One, if I'm doing coaching, yeah. I, I think just a lot of my time is gonna go into that. Right. And I'm so protective on my time, it's crazy. Agree, agree. Uh, the other thing is just like being salesy and uh, yeah. like there's a lot of pressure on like people, if, if you're just selling courses and people are not performing, that's just not ethical. And and, right. uh, and to make sure everybody's performing, that's a lot of work. Oh, definitely, yeah. So, but I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should do courses. I, I don't know. I know I would sell a lot of courses if right. I would be selling courses. So what I've learned from my colleagues who are in the in the business, um, the coaching side of things can take a toll on you for sure. Like that's a lot of like hand holding and work. And I don't know if I could uh, do that as well. I really respect my time as well, mm. you know. But the digital product of a course sounds appealing to me, you yeah. know. So it's like one product you make, and you know if. You know, 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people can buy that one product. And not all are gonna be successful in it, but that doesn't mean it's a bad product. No. You know, say if it's a 5% success rate or a 10% success rate, you know, those people are gonna be loyal to you forever, mm -hmm. while the other people are gonna say, oh, hey, this wasn't good for me, or hey, this was scammy, and this was not right, you mm -hmm. can't do this, it's too hard, or something like that, you know? And that's just the, the nature of the game, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's just, it is what it is, and that's how, like, how these, all these, you're never gonna have 100% success rate for that, you know? For sure. Do you buy any apartments? Uh, so I purchased multifamily. Um, I purchased more initially when I first um, got into the business. Um, I bought three buildings so far. Um, these buildings are in Chicago. Um, they are like, you know, six to $800,000 type buildings. Um, they're like four units or less. Um, and then I bought two homes for like my family and my, uh, my mother-in-law. Is it a, like massive villas or? No, I'm not balling like that yet. Um, I, I, <laughs> I saw you had a huge car collection. Yeah, like so Lamborghinis what, that, that's what I'm spending most of my money on. Yeah, so. It's crazy. Um, I spend a lot of money on cars. I have like, you know, my Lamborghini, my Rolls Royce, my G-Wagon, NSX. I spend a lot of money on cars. Um, well, for one, I like doing that because it makes me feel good. Yeah. And that's like my passion. That's what I always wanted to do when I, uh, when I was little, mm. you know, I always wanted the nice cars and, the, and now fortunately I have the funds to be able to get it. And number two is they're very liquid. And because my business is very seasonal and sometimes I need cash, like in my slow periods, I could liquidate a car tomorrow, right? You could trade it in. You, you get a hit on a discount for trading it in, but you can get the cash tomorrow. But they don't depreciate in value? So my cars don't. 
Okay. A normal car does, yeah. but a Lamborghini depreciates much slower okay. than a Honda Civic or a mm -hmm. Mercedes Benz. Like uh, the Lamborghini I bought for two hundred seventy thousand might be worth two sixty five now. It's been like six months now. You know, mm -hmm. drop down five thousand. What's five thousand, right? Yeah. Uh, my NSX I bought for like one fifty, and it's probably worth one forty. I dropped 10,000 mm. um, and during COVID it was opposite I was making money on every, all my cars I made like you know $40,000 yeah, on my Ferrari because inflation was just crazy and everything inflation, went up and then, and then the supply of exotics were down and then uh, a lot of money was moving people were bored yeah. uh, money was coming in for free from the government and stuff like um, people were making money uh, and they were buying exotics so yeah I, I bought a Ferrari four months later I was selling for $40,000 more than I bought it for you know yeah. uh, I bought a McLaren I sold it for 10,000 more. I wasn't trying to make money. I was just trying to like lose a lot of money, mm. but like the opportunity was coming. So I was taking advantage. Yeah. yeah. All right. I want to get into like some Airbnb strategy tactics yeah. uh, that you use. Cause obviously you're, you're managing so many more apartments than right. I am like a hundred times uh, more almost. Yeah. But uh, so virtual assistants, oh. how, how do you find the virtual assistants? So the virtual assistants, I don't even call them virtual assistants. They're like my team. Okay. So I have virtual, uh, I have my Philippine team um, that I sourced through a website called Online Jobs. Okay. It's basically just like a job posting and then people apply and then uh, you recruit. So I started my business with uh, the Philippine team. So that's all I know. So they are gold. They're the best workers with like yeah. the most discounted price. So like I'm getting like so much value from them. And within them, I just started scaling and I started scaling teams and I have um, leadership within the team too. I have like a- Recruiters? Uh, so I have an HR person that helps me recruit as well. Okay. Uh, so I have my operations team, finance team, revenue team. Wow. Uh, I have my onboarding team. And do they within, have an office or do they all work at home? They all work at home. Um, and we, I do have holiday parties where they all meet, but they all work at home. And but they all have leadership going up. They have like um, a team lead. They have a, a team manager. Then they have a, a director of operations, a director of finance. And you pay them like five bucks an hour. So the base is five bucks, but then the directors are getting paid like twelve dollars an hour. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What about? Uh so what do they handle? Obviously, they're handling yep. the communication with the guests. Yep. Yep. Are they handling setting up the listing, improving the listings, yes. reordering the photos? Yeah, so operations handles communication with guests, checking them in, handling problems that they are, are getting. Um, and then operations also has a cleaning management team that schedules all the cleaners to come out, what location, what time, when we have a check-in. Uh, and that, that team also handles the maintenance requests that we send to the landlords. Uh, and then we have, we have like the onboarding team that handles all like the content of the listing, uploads all the photos from the photography. Yeah, I gotta get yeah, into this. Man. Yeah, and then then they connect all the softwares to the listing and all the OTAs like Booking.com, VRBO, Expedia, Airbnb, and then to the Hostaway or Logify. You use Hostaway. Hostaway? Uh, I'm transitioning to Hostaway. I've yeah. been on Logify. I use Hostaway yeah. as well. Yeah, so I'm well, transitioning Hostaway. So so I use virtual assistants, but yeah. it's a little different. I yeah. I I I just went on. Fiverr, yeah. found this guy in Pakistan yeah. who has a team of virtual assistants. Right. They do all right, they do right. pretty good. They only handle the communication though. Right. And I can only communicate with the top guy. Top guy so yeah. it's very limited of what I can have them do. So it sounds like I really have to get into yeah. the Philippine market. If you're looking to scale up, you need to have control of what those people are doing. And the Philippine individuals are really good resources. So I highly, yeah. highly recommend those people. Yeah. Do some of those people, because because obviously Airbnb, the company itself, yeah. they have their whole operations are a big of it in the Philippines. So a lot of people that live in the Philippines have actually worked for Correct. Airbnb. Correct. Are some of your people from Airbnb or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't primarily focus on that, but like, yeah, that that helps, you know, if somebody says they were a case manager in Airbnb, like I guess there was three, um, like I think they call it like BOPs, like um, in Philippines, like Accenture and some other two companies that um, are hired to recruit the Philippines and then contracted by Airbnb to run their like, uh, like their case managers and the people who answer the phone calls and stuff. So it do definitely does help, but that's not like the one thing that is like needed to, you know, mm -hmm. you just need a good person. Do they all like have though experience with hospitality when they start or? Yeah, uh, but again, it varies. 
yes, it helps again from the recruiting side. But if you have a similar, if you're just a person that will figure it out and get it done, I'm okay with hiring you. You know, mm -hmm. um, but. I am not involved in hiring whatsoever anymore. You know, I haven't been, yeah. I, I hired my first two seven years ago. And then since then I haven't like yeah. uh, involved in they hiring. They just yes. find people. And they, 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 they make a posting, they do the interviews. I just say yes, you mm -hmm. know, and then they bring it on. And then, then finally I had my core team and then that core team was originally making $5 an hour and now they're making $12 an hour, but they were the ones that's making decisions on who's getting hired and stuff. Yeah, you know, they so, must be like yeah. 12 bucks an hour. It's like crazy money for them, I bet. Yeah, I mean, they've been with me for five years now mm. and what's Dude. what's $12 to me um, is, and which means everything to them, right? Yeah. So, oh man, it's well worth it, you know? Yeah. Like, Dude, you, yeah. you I've, I've never talked to anybody yeah. that has been in the game like the Airbnb arbitrage game as yeah. long as you. So yeah. it's crazy to hear like what you've yeah. built. Yeah, I'm, you're in Dubai, right? Dubai, the growth here is new, I feel yeah. like. So all the operators here are new. Yeah. So um, coming back to the States, yeah, like there was a boom on social media with like the Airbnb coaches and gurus and all this stuff on social media, how Airbnb is so easy, you could do it and you could make all this money. And uh, yeah, recently a lot of people have been getting into it. But yeah, I was there before all that, right? I was there pre-COVID, I was there uh, when the word rental arbitrage didn't even exist, you know? And that's when I kind of started and I've been through the ups and downs. Like I, I you know, COVID hit me like a brick wall mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I've almost lost my business a few times too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And what's the goals? What, what are yeah. your goals? So because of the toll and stress this business has given me and the ups and downs that I've received from cash flow things to COVID to regulation changes to like lawsuits, um, I originally wanted to get to this like four or 500 unit mark and have like $20 million worth of revenue and $2 million in net profit. But lately I started like saying like, okay, maybe 300 is the mark and I just keep as is, make my million dollars, keep good relationships with the landlords uh, and don't, don't make the 10th landlord be the reason I go under, right? Mm -hmm. um, keep my current landlords as is. Um, and explore other revenue generating opportunities like your personal brand. What can I do with my personal brand? Can I do uh, masterminds or coaching or courses or, or anything, you know, yeah. that's kind of where I'm at. But the money is good in this business right now. That's why I haven't monetized my personal brand yet, yeah. but I will. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. All right, one thing, one thing, so, so you, you have so much experience. So there's so many questions I want to ask you, but maybe you could help me with what questions to ask. So I just want to know, what do you think are, is like your, the biggest thing that you have realized that has yeah. made you successful in the Airbnb arbitrage? So, Something that yeah. maybe I might not know. Yeah, so there's so many like things that have happened to me during my like seven years, like um, being out and about and going to networking events and making relationships with people. Um, like there has been million dollar meetings that I have had because I've been in the right place at the right time. It's not gonna happen every time and all it takes to happen once, right? And you don't know where that relationship goes with that person that you meet. So for me to start my business, um, I went to a random networking event where a landlord um, had a team member there saying that we're looking for people to do Airbnb in our buildings. And this landlord had a thousand units, 100 units vacant at any given time, right? Um, and that, uh, after pitching for a long time, I was able to acquire my first two units. And that was the boom, right? Then eventually with that landlord, I went to 35 units. Another networking event that I went to in New York where I was speaking at that event, I met this, uh, this couple from New York. And then two years later, they brought to me an opportunity uh, during COVID when a company was going bankrupt. Uh, the company was Stay Alfred. And they were like, they're liquidating the furniture from the company. So uh, in that situation, um, I was like, I can't, aff I'm not even able to survive my business. How can I buy somebody else's furniture? I'm like, I'll offer $200 per unit, you know, for that furniture. And they're like, go ahead and do it, you know, uh, see what happens. And like six months later, they uh, agreed to my offer. 200 bucks for entire apartments worth of furniture. furniture. Yes. And I bought a total of 150 apartments worth of furniture from Stay Alfred and Domio's bankruptcy. And that was my million dollar networking opportunity from mm. that relationship I met, yeah. right? And then I had um, COVID happen to me where 
I was able to go to the landlords that I had relationships with and figure out solutions to like what was going on at the time. And then that by me staying in business, by me collecting that furniture from State Alfred, I was in revenue shares with the landlords. I was putting this furniture back into their units. So now while people are ending business in COVID, I'm scaling. Mm. So I'm doubling down in COVID. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden there's pent up demand in my market yeah. um, in 2021, 2022. And all of a sudden I have the record num number of units and I have a record number of dollars coming in. And it's just like perfect storm of things happening, right? Yeah, so, I bet yeah. 2021, right after COVID, when everybody shuts down yeah. and there's not a lot of Airbnbs in the market, yeah, that must have been a good time. Oh man, so in my market specifically, it went from 6,000 to 3,000. 50% of the inventory went away. Yeah. But the demand went back to what it was pre-COVID. And all of a sudden, half the inventory's gone, so prices were through the roof, yeah, you know? Exactly. So uh, yeah, it's like you, persistence, being savvy, having good relationships. These are the things that help you be successful, you know, mm. uh, in your like entrepreneurship journey. Yeah. Biggest thing is your relationship. Like you said, like you, you right now you have your um, eight units in Dubai, but you have a good relationship with this person and now you have some investors, like make them happy, make your landlord happy. And then you'll be able to quickly go, go to those hundred units. You know, mm. it's a good goal to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Any, uh, I'm, I'm all out. <laughs> It was good. It was a nice, quick meeting, you know, yeah. with a nice view in the background. Exactly. Yeah, this is Dubai right here. That's why we want to make, make it happen. Yeah, exactly. I love it, man. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure talking to you. You too, man. All right. It was good? Yeah, it was great. Good.